All right, uh, Horowitz and Hill. This is the uh, volume one. Uh, I learned a lot from this book back in the day. It was, it was the Bible, probably still is. Anyway, um, I talked about maybe going through some of the bad circuits they have in the book. <laughs> no, they didn't uh, have all bad circuits. They just put them in there on purpose. Uh, for you to, to learn from them. Um, I don't think there is a answers guide to this book. Um, it seems like I came across somebody who actually had done it and wrote something, but I can't find it now. But anyway, we can look at some bad circuits here. So, so, so what are wrong with these? Uh, AC coupled followers. Okay, so it is a follower. Uh, that works just great. Um, but, um, it's going to be really hard to turn this. Uh, <laughs> it's going to be really hard to turn this transistor on unless it's biased up. So it's really missing a base, base resistor up to VCC to bias this thing at a point where, where it is conducting. Um, you're, you, they say, well, the AC is going to come through here, and if the AC is big enough, it might turn this thing on. No, you really need to have that biasing thing there. Much like this, you need to have it biased like this. So. Um, so the second one here looks like it's biased correctly. Um, and we have AC coupled in and out. We have DC biasing correct here, but the uh, transistor has been put in backwards. Uh, it is an NPN transistor, but the um, uh, emitter needs to be down here at the bottom. Or uh, I suppose you could actually use a PNP there as well. It would work either way. All right. And then what is the last one here? The last one looks a lot like the first one. Uh, where we just aren't biased correctly. We need to have an extra an extra resistor in to bias this thing. And uh, again, the um, resist the uh, transistor is the wrong kind. If you have plus here and negative here, that arrow needs to always point in the direction of the positive current, right? So positive or negative, that arrow needs to go needs to go the other direction. All right. And I'm just doing hand waves on these things. I mean, you could really go into depth about what's wrong with them and how you should make them better and all stuff like that here. All right, let's take a look at this one. Uh, ooh, I don't have enough room up. This proper, there we go. Uh, bad circuits, AC input, DC coupled. Okay, we have a DC coupled input. This is a emitter, I mean, a. a uh, op amp follower. So whatever we have here, we're going to have here on the output. And uh, then this gets tied uh, down to this thing. That's just, that's just really, really bad. Um, it might be like a clipping circuit where this sets some voltage here and then uh, maybe you're going to clip it or something, but you, you can't have the outputs of these two things tied together. It's going to be too much current flow here. So you need to add a resistor. Uh, it says adjustable clamp. Yeah, there needs to be a uh, needs to be a resistor, probably right here. Let's see if I can get something to point with. Um, I'd probably put a, a resistor right at this point here. All right, uh, A B. Here's number B. All right, A C coupled times ten. Okay, and so it is um, not inverting. And we have the right values here. AC coupled. What's wrong with this one? All right. The only thing I see wrong with this one is uh, it's since it's AC coupled, you have a, a floating input for this op amp. And you should probably have a resistor down to ground. Pull that down to ground. And uh, so in its normal state, it, it, will, it will be zero volts here. Um, and... Uh, it doesn't really tell me much else about that. So we'll go with that one. Yeah. All right, triangle wave generator. So we have a uh, an integrator. So it's going to integrate up and integrate down and integrate up, integrate down. We have a square wave generator coming in and a sawtooth coming out. I don't know. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not seeing anything wrong with these. <laughs> What's wrong with me? I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> that'll be <laughs> that'll be the point of this video. Tell me how much of an idiot I am. Okay, current source. Uh, voltage programmable. So you put a voltage here. That voltage will appear um, here at the negative. And then uh, you're going to have 
Um, so these need to be in different spots. The load needs to be up here and the resistor needs to be down here. Then you'll set the voltage across the resistor and that will be the same as the, uh, as the current across. So the, the, the voltage in will be here, voltage here, this will be a resistor, and then that voltage across the resistor will be current, that current will be, will be through the load. So just swap these two things here. D, all right, E. DC amplifier times 100. Um, in general, times 100 is not a good idea. You probably have a times 10 and a times 10 uh, followed by one another. But um, the thing that's wrong with this, that was, that's just kind of design practices. Gain of 100 is fine. But uh, the plus and the minus on the inputs are wrong. This is a non-inverting amplifier, so the, the plus has to be here and the minus has to be here. So they just, uh, and I've done this so many times laying out PC boards, doing the schematic capture and getting, getting the plus and minus flipped around. Done that so many times. All right. Uh, 200 milliamp current source from Defenderfer, not intended as a bad circuit. <laughs> not intended. So they use somebody's design, then they call it a bad circuit? I don't know, that's pretty bad. Okay, so we have uh, plus 15 coming in, 9 volts in here. So now we have 9 volts here. We have 9 volts coming in, and this will act like a uh, kind of a trans impedance amplifier. 9 volts here, ground here. That means we'll have ground here. So we'll have uh, high current op amps. The load will be here. Uh, yeah, that's not going to work because... Um, there's no return. The, the, the input of an op amp is, is high impedance, so uh, it might be hard to drive this thing correctly. So anyway, that's what I'm going with, guys. <laughs> tell, me how, tell me how stupid I am. All right, let's see here. What's wrong with this one? Times 100 op amp output stage for audio amplifier. Ooh, geez. That's kind of weird looking. Coming in here, okay, we have it correctly biased, so this thing is going to give us some voltage out here. And then it's going to go through another, this is correct, another on times 100 output stage for audio amplifier. Hmm, you can get a lot of distortion in that thing, but that's what you want to do. Uh, 100, I don't know. Uh, are the gains set up correctly? Yeah. Times 100, so you're going to get about... 10 to 1 here, and 100 to 1 here. Uh, yeah, I think you're going to get too much gain out of that one. I don't know. I don't like this game. <laughs> I've already decided. <laughs> I don't like this game. Uh, Schmidt Trigger. Oh, geez. Uh, I've actually done a video on these. And there's a trick to 10K, 10K, 10K. That's right. Uh, plus is right. Um, 15 volts here, 5 volts out, 1K, hmm, uh, let's see here, 1K, I don't know, I don't know what's wrong with that one, you tell me, uh, let's see here, 15 volt regulator, okay, we're going to set up uh, 5 volts here, it will compare it. This is a divide there. So 15 gets divided down. That's right. It will come around. It will turn this guy on. Right away, I see that maybe that single, single-ended op amp might be the problem. Um, let's see here. Coming in here. Uh, and yeah, that's not right. That's not right. I think you're going to get in trouble. First of all, uh, you need to have some kind of base limiting resistor here. Um, but I think, uh, let's see, this is going to be 15. This has to go, yeah. So in order to turn this, uh, 
trans transistor on, it needs to be bigger than its emitter. Its emitter is at plus 15. It needs to be bigger than plus 15 to turn it on. And guess what? The power supply from this is coming from the output. So yeah, don't do that. Don't put your output. Yeah. Anyway, a bunch of stuff wrong with that one. Yeah. Just go away. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's wrong with this one? 100 times audio amplifier, single supply. I wonder if that's a clue. Single supply. Uh, yeah, single supply. So this can't be referenced to ground. It has to be referenced to uh, something halfway between ground and, and plus nine. So that's going to be the error right there. And uh, let's see here. Zero crossing. Uh, 110 volts AC. I don't think you're going to run 110 volts AC into a uh, into this thing here. And I think 60 hertz. Aren't you going to get 120 hertz? Anyway. Anyhow, I don't like that one. Um, op amp as a plus 15 regulator. Okay, we have 5 volts. I don't know if this thing is a uh, rail to rail, it actually can take five volts on its input, but five volts here will give you five volts here, five volts here will give you 15 volts out there. But you can't get 15 volts out here because it's only a five volt supply. Op amp, that was just awful. That's just an awful circuit. All right. I noticed these weren't in the later, uh, the later books. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they didn't like the idea of giving, giving bad circuits, and these are super bad circuits. At least some of them are. Some of them I can't figure out though. So maybe I'm not. Maybe it's not so bad. 555 must be shorter than the output pulse. Oh, I hate those. I'm not going to even do that one. 555, I'm not good at just doing on the on the fly. Active inductor, I don't know about those either. Look them up. Look them up. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Monostable. Yeah, now they're getting hard. Now I don't want to do them anymore. Uh, this is kind of a Weinbridge oscillator down here. Um... What else we got? Oh, geez. I got a lot of them here. Oh, these are good circuit ideas. Were these good circuit ideas? Oh, shoot. These were good circuit ideas. <laughs> Not bad circuit ideas. Th these were good circuit ideas. So anyway, uh, okay. Circuit ideas. Uh, here's some bad circuits. Here's some good circuits and here's some bad circuits. All right. Bad circuits are on the bottom. All right. Uh, this is a clipping circuit analog switches. Uh, that's just kind of a clamp. I don't really like that one. Analog switches, blah, 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 blah. I'm not qualified to talk about those. Uh, op amps with switches. Wacka, wacka. Yeah, I'm not really qualified to talk about any of that stuff. Uh, so you, you don't need to know everything, right? If you need to know it, learn it when you need to know it. That's where I'm going. Uh, this one looks okay. What's wrong with this one? This one looks fine. What's wrong with this one? Self-biasing. 10 ohms is a little low, but I don't know. Times 1,000. I don't know. That's kind of weird. Maybe the amp, I don't know, maybe it's too high. Logic switch. Turn on and off. That doesn't look so bad. I don't know. Current source. Yeah, that looks kind of wrong too. That topology looks kind of wrong. You need to have the load up here and the resistor at the bottom. Yeah, I don't like this game. I don't like this game. Uh, what are these? These are good ideas. Those are good circuits. And here's some bad circuits. I don't like those. Those are digital. Uh, bad circuits. Here we go. Here's some bad circuits. Bad circuits. I think these were done all the. Time. I think these are done all the time back in the bad back in the old days. I think this was done all the time. Make that a Schmidt trigger. Um, uh, let's see, wired or 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 pull up gates. I don't know. Logic gate and see, this is from the old days. Today you would do this. Today you would be fine driving it directly. In the old days, you couldn't drive. Uh, LEDs because the TTL parts only had like a 120 ohm pull-up resistor in them and it wasn't enough to turn on an LED. It actually is now because the LED, <laughs> LEDs are actually really efficient. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't like this game. Yeah, I don't want to play this game anymore. All right. And last game is circuits are a good idea. These are good circuits. So anyway, that wasn't too much fun. I thought it might be fun. Turned out to be a, turned out to be a lousy, uh, a lousy video. Horowitz and Hill.
all the bad circuits. You can learn from bad circuits, but you sort of have to know, you sort of have to know, you sort of have to have somebody tell you why they're bad. Otherwise you're gonna kind of teach yourself the wrong thing. I mean, it might be an interesting exercise to try to figure it out, but um, yeah. Um, I think that's why they took them out. I don't think it's a good, it's a, I don't think it's a good learning tool. I really don't. Um, uh, better to look at, always look at good circuits, always look at good circuits and then try to figure out if a good circuit's not working, why? I think looking at bad circuits just will develop bad habits and yeah, don't go there.